What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, just finished checking out SmackDown, doing a live stream reaction with you guys on the channel. Appreciate everyone that was able to show some love, so show some support and pop out tonight. We got to talk about uh, LA Knight and Roman Reigns, their contract signing for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship, their match they're having at Crown Jewel next Saturday, I believe, of me filming this. Um, and they started off the show with that segment. I thought they were going to end off the show with that, but no, they got to the nitty gritty. They started off the show, uh, with the contract signing Roman Reigns music hit. He's doing his normal entrance, all this other stuff. You got the pyro, got the, the slow walk in with Paul Heyman. Like, you know, that's, he is. He's the tribal chief. He's the guy. He's the, the the number one guy in WWE. So he gets the the entrance, the slow walk, all this other stuff. And what was so funny is I was thinking this before it actually happened. I was like, it would be very interesting and very cool if LA Knight just his music hit and he came out there and interrupted it. And that's exactly what happened. And I was dying laughing. LA Knight music hit. While Roman is still on the entrance ramp, he's still soaking it all in. No one's done this yet. No one's just interrupted him mid-entrance. He's on the entrance ramp. LA Night music hit. Crowd goes crazy. He walks past both of them. Roman's just like... He's trying to remain composed in that. I love the mind games LA Knight had. Because the last time they interacted with each other, LA Knight got speared for his troubles. So, <clears throat> LA Knight's in the ring or whatnot. <clears throat> they finally get to the ring, Roman and Paul Heyman. And, <sighs> once again, LA Knight does something that we haven't seen. No one, None of Roman's opponents have done this yet. LA Knight sits at the head of the table. Usually they have the chairs on the opposite side of each other. Paul Heyman will move the chair to the head, to the head of the table, and that's where Roman would usually sit, and the challenger would sit on the other side of the table. That's what happened here. Paul Heyman moves it over, and then <laughs> LA Knight proceeds to sit at the head of the table. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is great. Paul Heyman's trying to move him, and LA Knight is like, Hey, you better move. I'm not moving from this spot. <laughs> so Roman is forced to sit at the side of the table. Roman's still trying to maintain that composure. I love the disrespect that LA Knight is showing right here. And before we can even get into anything, before Roman can even really say anything or Paul Heyman can say anything, you got Nick Aldis back there just there to give out the contract. <laughs> he, <laughs> LA Knight cuts off Roman. And it's like, yo, 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 yo. I'm not here for all the, the, the talking. I'm here to sign over this contract. The contract, this contract that says I'm going to take that title from you. I'm here to sign it. And that's about it. Let's get this going. He signed it. Pass it off to him. Come on. And I loved it because Roman's just like, what the hell? And once again, crowd is chanting LA Knight. They love LA Knight. So Roman, he's like, yo, you just going to sign the contract? Like, that's it? And then Roman started getting into his bag. He, he, he started getting into his disrespectful bag. He started trying to bring up the fact like, yo, ain't this your first contract signing? No, 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 no. Ain't this your first, like, actual championship match like you new to this you you acting like you've been done i was like you're this is something new to you right and then he started really being disrespectful like don't worry about it i'm a, we i'm gonna take it real easy on you i'm gonna i'm gonna take my time i'm gonna, I'm gonna go real easy on you. i'm gonna go slow with it i'm like damn bro, you trying to make love to him like what's going on and i'm gonna take it easy on you this first go around, okay? Because you, you don't know. Like, he's really treating him like a joke. So he signs it. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take it easy on you. And then that's when my boy, LA and I is like, see, that's where you messed up at. That's where you lose. Because you're going to take it easy on me. And I hope you do. Because that's when you're going to fail. 
And then he, he started firing back. He's like, see, with you, you've been given multiple opportunities, multiple times. This is like, this is not your first rodeo. I understand that. You know, you ain't always have it. We, you know, he brought up the suffering succotash days, which was a real good line. It's like, yo, you, you weren't always who you are now. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you've had to really come into who you are now. Like we ain't forget about the suffering succotash. And I even love the little jab since he's sitting at the top, at the head of the table. It's like, Roman, I want you to acknowledge me. And mind you, Roman's starting to get more irritated, more pissed. And you can visibly see it with his emotions. This was great. Just having someone disrespect this nigga in so many ways, coming out during his entrance, you know, interrupting him before he can say anything, sitting at the head of the table where he normally sits at the head of the table, having someone tell them to acknowledge me, like acknowledge him, it, you know what I'm saying? Roman's not used to that. So it got to that point where Roman said, screw it. He flipped over the table after the contract was signed. Nick Aldis is already gone. After they had their back and forth, he flipped over the table in LA Knight's face, and he starts giving them the beats. Then he picks, he goes outside the ring, gets a, gets a table from under the ring, sets it up in the ring, and it looks like he's about to put him through the table. And then that's when LA Knight gets you know gets his get back and starts stomping a mud hole in roman reigns i mean just stomping him over and over and over crouching yeah beautiful moment to see and then of course jimmy himself comes out of nowhere starts attacking him or whatnot roman scurries out the way and jimmy gets put through the table as he deserves instead of roman reigns it was a pretty cool spot jimmy got thrown through the table when not and Roman scurries to the back while LA Knight is standing tall. So we get another backstage segment where uh Roman is, you know, <laughs> you know, in the backstage with uh Paul Heyman trying to, you know, fix his hair and all this other stuff. Jimmy comes in and you know, <laughs> Roman's like, Where you been? He's like, Oh, I've been with the medical trainers, he's selling, you know, falling, you know, getting thrown through the table or whatnot <laughs> and they're still going with the football reference so jimmy uh you know is like you know uh you know the play wasn't executed and roman was like yo what was going on like i thought you i thought you had to play like you didn't execute the play like you were supposed to and then he he told jimmy he's like i'm gonna need you to take care of this tonight of our la night problem <laughs> and this sticky jimmy said i'm on I'm on injury re reserve. What? Roman's like, what? Yeah, I'm on injury reserve right now. <laughs> the football references is so stupid. But they ended up making a match for <laughs> LA Knight <laughs> versus Jimmy Uso. And Roman said, take care of business. Get off injury reserve and take care of business. Run the play. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, break. <laughs> So we we knew that was gonna be uh, most likely the main event. Would well, ended up being the main event. Jimmy Uso versus L.A. Knight, and you knew there was gonna be some potential shenanigans at the end. We also gotta talk about uh, John Cena, Paul Heyman's interaction, and Solo Sokoa being into the mix. They just announced today that uh, John Cena will be having a one on one against Solo Sokoa. And once again, John is doing a great job. You know, he's getting his acting chops ready because he was selling this promo. The basis of this promo is simply, I need to win. We heard last week that he hasn't won a match damn near since like 2018. So this promo was all about, I need to win, but I'm going against Solo Sokoa, which they have built up as this monster individual. And... He's basically saying, I don't want to let you guys down because I feel if I lose this match, I let all of you guys down. I let everybody down and I'm not, you guys are not going to look at me the same, which we all know that's not the case, John, but he's selling it. He's selling it. Paul Heyman comes out there and Paul Heyman's really good at this. He's always good at this. He's good at bigging up opponents, but then he's also good at bigging up his clientele. So... He goes out there and he bigs up John. He's like, John, you, you know, you are a certified legend. You know, I was one of the people that wanted you to come from OVW to WWE. I personally told Vince he should be the number one guy you pick. 
or whatnot. Don't know how true that is, but it seems like there is a little bit of truth there. So he's like, you are a certified legend. You have been there for this company for over 20 plus years. They have been able to depend on you. My kids, I would want them to grow up to be like you. But then when you face Roman Reigns, it, you know, we knew that the times have changed. You're, you're not the greatest no more. It's Roman. And I get that you you need to win and that you want to win. Like You need this. But I, I unfortunately, you cross the bloodline and you're not going to beat Solo. You, you think you're going to win this and you need to win this for them. But I hate to tell you, this is not a prediction. This is a spoiler. You are not beating Solo. And he was just really kind of talking. And I like what they did here because Paul Heyman is good at being the mouthpiece for other wrestlers. We know Solo is not that really you know, well-versed on the microphone delivering promos. He's kind of straight to the point, which is fine and works for his character. But they had him out here for two reasons. One, to build up the match, to have the back and forth with John Cena. Even Paul Heyman himself said, if there's anybody, you're probably greater on the microphone than I am. He gave him props. John Cena is one of the greatest to talk on this microphone, to sell you on anything, to make you believe you're one of the greatest of all time. He gave him that prop. So he did, you know, he's being the mouthpiece for Solo, but also it's storyline driven because he's suckering in Paul Heyman. He's suckering in John Cena to lower his guard down. And that's when Solo come from come in from behind and attack, <clears throat> attack John Cena. They even set it up so br great that the Samoan spike will be the thing that would that would, you know, Take away one of John Cena's greatest abilities, being able to talk, being able to uh, emote and let people know how you feel. You can't do that when so when Solo hits you with that Samoan spike. And that's what they were building up to. He got attacked from behind and ultimately he got hit with the Samoan spike from Solo. So I like the story that they were just telling just with their back and forth. John Cena trying to overcome this doubt that he can't go anymore and he doesn't want to let the fans down. Solo being this new threat that may take out John Cena and do the one thing that, uh, take out the one thing that John Cena has been so really good at is being able to talk. And that Samoan Spike may be the thing that send him away for good. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. It definitely looked like the way they set up everything that John Cena most likely will win this match. But we will see. But it should be a good and entertaining one. Looking forward to it. And then we also got to talk about um, Jimmy and uh, LA Knight's match. Pretty fun match. Crowd was into it. But I'm not even going to go into the details into it. I'm going to get to the sh to the ending part. I was very surprised. I thought the shenanigans was going to take place during the match. It going to cause a DQ. But no. LA Knight beats Jimmy. Clean, no interference, no shenanigans, nothing. Just beats him clean with his finisher, uh, the BFT, one, two, three. Boom, match was done. He's celebrating on one of the turnbuckles. You can hear some people in the crowd, uh, you know, you know, you know, like getting active. So I knew somebody was in the ring or whatnot. He turned around and it looked like Roman was going to spear him again. But no, LA Knight was aware of it. And threw him into the turnbuckle or whatnot. And then he was able to hit Roman Reigns with the BFT. And got a huge pop. Roman selling it like he's just been hit with a shotgun as he should. Definitely was selling it. And uh, we went off the show with LA Knight talking trash over Roman Reigns. Letting him know, I ain't, I ain't the one. I ain't the one you're going to you know try to attack two weeks in a row. I ain't the one that you're going to take lightly. You're going to take me seriously or you're going to pay for it. I am not the one to take lightly. And I love that. So show was pretty entertaining. Definitely got me excited for what's going to happen on uh, uh, at Crown Jewel. I believe they're doing a taping tonight as well of next week's SmackDown because they're going to be flying over there. So they're going to have to do the taping. So next uh, week's SmackDown will be taped, pre-taped already. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens going forward. 
But uh, yeah, man, I enjoyed the show for the most part. Comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite part of the show, man. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.